Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds. We are back. It's a very special small business Edition. How any small business can survive and even grow, yes, and even grow during this recession. Here's the backstory on, on why I'm doing this. About a week ago, I sent an email out to all of our subscribers. Thank you all for, uh, for, for being on our email list and, and being valued customers. And I asked one simple question. What's on your mind right now? How can we help you, regardless if it's fishing, if it's something with with family, if it's something with this virus, if it's something with your business, your income? uh, Can we pray for you? Uh, and, and I got thousands of responses and I'm personally responding to everyone. It took me three days to get to the first 1200 and I felt like I had carpal tunnel, but, uh, I, I will say it is, it is so rewarding for me, uh, as a small business owner to have that many people who'd even take the time to reply. And so I want to just thank you. Uh, it, it means a lot to me. And I feel like I know so many of you so much better because of some of the stories you've shared and some of the prayer requests that you asked. Uh, it, it was really, really cool. And one other thing that I, I noticed a trend was how many of our insider members and how many of just our, our overall audience are small business owners. And uh, that says a lot about you. And, uh, and, and really, I truly believe that, that small businesses, regardless if you're an owner or an employee or a contractor of one, I mean, we are what fuels this economy. You know, we, we, I mean, every big company, even Apple, was a small business at one time. Even if you know the story of Apple, it was basically two dudes in a garage uh, as a small business with, with big dreams. And uh, so small businesses are, are really what fuels America. And so I want to see as many as possible, not just survive. But but really thrive, and I, I went through this similar thing in two thousand eight, two thousand nine. So I know the feeling. I, I've I've been there before. What I'm going to share with you today worked then, and it's actually working now in some really scary times and some uncertain times. And really, the thing that kind of that that bugged me the most on some of the responses I heard, and this is not one person, this was multiple people. And this is just in general, I think small business owners, so many of us just say, Hey, you know what? There's not much I can do. I've been forced to close. Um, these are tough times. I'm having to lay off people. And I, I heard this phrase multiple times. You know what? I, I'm, I'm waiting on my, my stimulus check and, and just waiting for business to pick up. And, and I think that is probably the worst thing you could possibly do. And, and, and here's why. There's going to be a new normal once we are out of this. And we will get out of this. That's the great news. I do believe that if you don't take this time to try a few new things and to think outside the box and start meeting your ideal customers where they are right now. People still have money. People are spending, people are spending tons of money. It's salt strong right now as an online education company. I mean, e-learning is now cool and hip and people are at home. People are sending us lots of money every single hour. So I know people still have money. People are spending a lot of money on toilet paper and hand sanitizer right now. People still have money. People still want your product and your service, regardless if you have a physical store and people can't come into it. There are people out there that want your stuff and want to know what you have and want to be helped right now. So even if you were like forced to close down your store right now, this is an amazing opportunity to start getting in front of of your ideal customer so that when it does turn around and when you do open your doors or you do start selling your product or service again, that you are flooded with new customers. Because if you're just sitting there waiting and hoping and praying that it's just going to all of a sudden fix itself, I, I don't believe it is. And so let me, um, let me just kind of share the overall message with you. And this is what changed everything for me as a small business owner. I opened up my very first small business in 2008, and really the end of 08, 09. Talk about like one of the worst times in history. It would be like buying a house in 2006 and 2007, which I did as well. So I, I was selling financial services products and that was a tough time because, you know, if you recall in 2008, I mean, trillions of dollars were just completely wiped out, just like what happened here recently. 
And, and even though people had money, they didn't really want to start talking about investing yet. I mean, people were sitting on the sidelines and, and you might have been as well. I know it was a tough time for so many people. The last thing people wanted to start doing was thinking about in, investing and trying new things in 2008, 2009. And I was at a conference, uh, a marketing and business conference in Vegas of all places. And this dude up there is talking about blogging. And, and, and don't turn this off for quick. You think oh, this whole thing is going to be about blogging. It's not. Uh, but it's, it's the beginning of the conversation I want to have with you that I really do believe could change your life and, and certainly change your, your business. And he's talking about blogging. And at the time, you know, 2008, I, I'm thinking that blogging is for like stay-at-home moms and, and, and old women talking about knitting and stuff like that. I just, I, I, I don't, I didn't go to blogs. I wasn't like, I wasn't a blogger. And, and a lot of obviously has changed in a, in a somewhat short amount of time. But he's talking about blogging and talking about how it, it literally changed his business. And and the reason why is he was you know putting content out there pretty consistently. And, and he knew that people, that his ideal customers, were going online to research the kind of products that he was selling. And he's like, well, I, I, I know where the, my customers are. Uh, so I just wanted to meet them where they are. And as soon as he said that, it's something that stuck with me forever. And this is really the critical an- the, the thing, the critical question that you must answer. Where are your ideal customers right now? We know they're online, right? So this is certainly going to be a conversation about m- not moving your business online, but moving your voice and moving your message online. You know they're there. Why not meet them where they are. Like for us, for instance, you know, with fishing, we knew that a lot of our customers were on YouTube, which is why we have a YouTube channel. We're putting up content every day. And that draws in a vast chunk of all the people who join our insider club. There is a gentleman, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link to it in the in the show notes in the blog called, his name is Marcus Sheridan. Uh, he had a pool company and this was a high-end pool company in, uh, in Virginia. And you can guess what happened in 2008, 2009. People weren't buying six-figure pools anymore. Like that was the last thing they needed. His business went to not just like a slowdown, it went to an abrupt, abrupt halt, not a single order for a couple of months. And he had two choices, just like you do. Hey, I'm going to sit here and wait on some stimulus checks, or I'm going to get out there and just start blogging, start writing, start doing some videos, try to go find where my ideal customers are and just being helpful, adding value to them, answering their questions. So he would start getting on there and filming little videos on his phone. He had no fancy camera equipment. He had nothing nice. He just, he literally took what he had right then and there. Once again, his business is not just failing. He fired every single employee. He is down to nothing but himself and his wife and, you know, some, some, basically some inventory on building pools. And he just started doing video after video and writing and writing, just literally sharing everything you would want to know, the top mistakes that people make when it comes to buying new pool. Uh, Here's what to look for when you're repairing certain things. I mean, he just started answering every question he had ever heard in a sales call. And, and guess what? The bad news is he didn't all of a sudden start getting orders coming in the next day. I'd be lying if you said he did. But if you listen to his TED Talk, which is fascinating, he said all of a sudden, you know, a new lead would come in. And he would say, well, hey, hey, how'd you hear about me? You're not even close to me. You're like hours away. Like, oh, I, I saw something on, on YouTube or on Facebook. Or I read this thing on the internet. I was I was searching for something, and you know your pool company came up, and I'm I'm looking to, to buy a new pool. And before you know it, he took a pool company that was doing you know uh, I think a million or so a year in revenue to millions, millions and millions of dollars started flowing in as soon as the economy even started getting somewhat better. He was now making millions of dollars. I mean, this is less than a year. He literally not just transformed his business. But I mean, started now employing tons of people and grew it faster than he ever could, all from the power of the internet. And I'll give you a great example that just happened here recently is uh, we had a gentleman reach out to us. He's one of our insider members and he makes custom rods. He didn't want to go blog. He didn't want to go do videos, but he knew he had a lot to share. And he asked if he could just be super helpful and just share everything he's learned about making custom rods over the last 10 years of doing it. And I said, man, that would be awesome. So he got on my podcast because once again, he wanted to go where his ideal customers are right right now. So once again, you must answer this. If you're going to survive, where are your ideal customers right now? In particular, where are your ideal customers right now on the internet? internet? What are they searching for? What are they reading? What podcast are they listening to? And, and let me show the coolest part of the story. So this guy comes on and is a, a black Pelican custom rods. 
And he shares like, I'm talking everything for an hour. He shares like crazy to the enough to a point where you could go build a rod by yourself. Right. So a lot of people with scarcity mindset might think, well, gosh, if I share all that, no one's going to come to me. Guess what? Most people don't want to go build a rod by themselves. I'm sure maybe a few people did. This dude has sold hundreds, I believe, of rods. And these are $500 to $800 rods. Let's just say he sold a hundred of them. You can do the math. He has made a lot of money. He actually called me and said it is like literally transformed his business coming on my podcast. That's crazy. And, and anyone could do that. Anyone can reach out to me if you have an awesome service and you really believe your ideal customers are listening to my podcast. I would love to have you. Of course, I vet you out and, and I, I vetted out a lot of people and have purposely not let some messages come on this podcast. But my point is, there are so many different blogs if you don't want to do your own. There are so many different podcasts if you don't want to do your own. There are so many different YouTube channels if you don't want to do your own that you could add value to to their audience, assuming your ideal customers are right there. Because here's the deal, guys. We don't have a stimulus check problem. If, if you get a stimulus check, yeah, it's going to get you by for a little bit, but it's not going to solve all your problems. The, the biggest problem right now, your biggest problem right now, my biggest problem right now is obscurity. That's it. Obscurity. And that's unless you're Coca-Cola or, you know, or, or Home Depot or Apple, our biggest problem right now as small business owners is obscurity. Not enough people know who you are. Not enough people know how you can help them and not enough people know exactly what you sell and how you can make their life better. And that is your job as a small business owner. It's not anyone else's job. It's not the marketing company you hire. It is your job, especially if you are the president or the founder or one of the co-founders or someone in upper, upper management. It is your job and our job as small business owners to share as much as we possibly can, to be helpful, to go meet our ideal customers where they are right now. So let me just go back into my story and share with you what happened. So I'm going through a crazy time. First first business I've ever started. I'm freaking out. I made like uh, the worst decision of my life. And maybe some of you are there right now. You just started your first business and it's just like everything came crashing down underneath you. And that's how I felt. And so I took this information from this Las Vegas conference that I was at and I created my first blog. I knew nothing about it. I don't know how to code websites. I know nothing. And so I started going to YouTube. And I, how do you start a blog? And there's this little thing called WordPress. Cool. I got me a WordPress site, bought me a domain for $10 on GoDaddy. And the site that I created, some of you who've been following me for many years and, and knew me back then, it's called Annuity Think Tank. And you might remember it. It's Annuity Think Tank. I was, I was in the annuity business is one of the main things I did. And I just started blogging every day and doing little videos on my phone. I didn't buy anything fancy. I mean, the, the blog, the GoDaddy demand is like I said, 10 to 12 bucks max to host a site with not much on it. I mean, it, it's another $10 a month. It, this is all super, super cheap stuff. And I just started writing and I started answering the questions that people had. And, and let me tell you the, the million dollar uh, the question here is if you could talk to one of your customers, one of your best customers, or, or talk to someone that maybe just bought from you, maybe you're one of your most recent customers and just ask them, hey, you know, hey, Bob, hey, Jane, what were you typing into Google when you were doing research on this product or service? Well, it, it just imagine there's a keyboard in front of your in front of your fingers right now and there's a screen in front of your face. What would you type in to, to find out more about me? And I started asking people that. I started asking our customers that. And I started asking some of the financial advisors we work with. And I started just writing those stuff down. And I just started answering them. Because you know if someone's typing in that question, they're looking for an answer to that question. Why not answer them? Why not be the first person up there on Google or the first thing that, that pops up on YouTube? And a lot of people think, oh, I can never do that. It takes forever. It, it, it was surprisingly easy. It's surprisingly easy today because we've done, we, I literally took the same blueprint from back then with SaltStrong that we did in Nudie Think Tank. And, and here's the coolest part of the story. By 2009, by the end of 2009, the blog was going, it was creating some traffic for it, it was creating some leads, our ideal customers were coming through it, and I ended up having one of the best years I had ever had in my entire life in 2009, when most people were struggling, when most people were still trying to figure it out, and it was all because of that blog. Even cooler story, a couple of years later, 
that blog was sold for like $36,000. That was not my business. That was just a little side project where I was just putting content up. And what was interesting is now the market was better. People had cash and there was a big company out there that wanted the eyeballs that were coming to Annuity Think Tank. And they made me an offer and I probably should have asked for more, but I didn't know it had any worth to it. And I was like, holy smokes, just because of my couple years of blogging, it's just me writing. It was just kind of boring stuff about annuities, but I was answering the questions that people had and me doing a couple videos per week. I sold that thing for $36,000 cash. It was an amazing little asset that I built up. And once again, that was not even my business. That was just a little side hustle. And so I, I tell you all that, that this is, this is the perfect time. There's never been a perfect time, especially if you're home right now, just to start writing, to start sharing, to be helpful. Go on podcast, contact the news. The media is dying for stories right now. The media, every morning, there's, there's, there are journalists out there who are just dying for something cool to write about. If you have a cool story, if you have a cool product, if you don't, you better go back to the drawing board. But if you have something that's helping people, just contact. I'm not talking about you know going to uh, the national Fox Business News or CNN or whatever. I'm talking about just your local ABC News, NBC News, whoever it is, contact them. You'll be surprised how easy it is to get on the news Start leveraging the internet more. Contact blogs where your ideal customers visit. Ask to be a guest writer if you don't want to go to the hassle of creating your own blog. I mean, this gentleman here, he's still getting orders in right now. I just spoke to him last week in the middle of this coronavirus and the, the Black Pelican Rod guy I told you about. He's still getting orders from people. There are people buying five to $600 rods right now as I record this. And right now as you're listening to this, there's people out there with money and they never would have known who he was had he not come on my podcast. And it was as easy as him as contacting me saying, here's what I'm going to add value to. Here's why your audience is going to love it. I gave him a shot. We recorded it, took an hour of his time, and now he's made tens of thousands of dollars uh, because of that one thing. He could do that, and he should, if, if he's listening, Brandon, you should do that over and over again, not just to me, but any other place that your ideal customers are on right now. Another great example is Captain Dillard Hubbard at Hubbard's Marina. He is, they are shut down. Hubbard's Marina had to shut down because of all this. It was the right, it was the right decision for him to make, but guess what he's doing? The dude is piling on the content. He is going to Facebook. Facebook Live. If you don't watch his Facebook Lives, they're awesome. He does them every Sunday night. They're so helpful. They're entertaining. He's sharing like crazy because guess what? He's figured out that his ideal customers, his clients, they're on Facebook and they're on Facebook on Sunday night and he has built up a massive following. And when they open up their doors, he is going to be flooded with people. He's going to have more business than he knows what to do with. He's built up this pent up demand because he's out there. And you could do that on your laptop. Assuming you're a small business owner, you must have a laptop or a computer with some type of camera or even your phone. That's all he's doing. I've been, I've seen his studio at his house. It's literally in a little small, small like uh, office and it's got a little backdrop and that's it. And it's just a computer with a camera. There's nothing fancy about it. It's just a normal generic desktop computer and he's going live just answering questions. That's it. He's just being super helpful. That's it. He's leveraging the internet. That's it. He's just going to exactly where his customers are on the internet. So I would encourage you right now more than any other time to leverage the internet. There has never been a time where so many people are on there consuming things, consuming everything from news to hobbies like fishing, like they're interested. I know because we're actually blowing up right now, like in a good way. We're having a really, really good month because so many people are online. And because everything I'm telling you right now, we've been doing it for five years. We had a couple years of struggle of just putting out goodwill, of answering questions that people had on redfish and speckled trout and snook and flounder and tarpon, et cetera. And now, because they are online and they are searching for this stuff, we're showing up at the top of the feed. And that can be you for your industry. I'm telling you, it's not as hard as you think it is. And it's not as hard as you think it is to rank well. And it's not as hard as you think it is to go out there and get a lot of customers from even just a couple of videos or a couple of blogs. I will stay Say, I will say that you have to be consistent with it. But even if you don't want to do your own, do what this guy Brandon did. I, I don't think he's going to go start his own podcast, but create, uh, call someone who does. Reach out to him. You'd be shocked. And I, I wake up every week. All right, what am I? Who am I going to have on my podcast? Uh, what can? I, how can I add value to my audience? 
uh, you know, what would be a cool story to share. So if you have one, reach out. You'll be shocked at how many people in the media are, are just dying for a cool story to share with uh, their audience. Part number two, I would ditch any part of your business that is not essential right now. I would, this is a great time and we're doing the same thing to look at the business and just, you know, do that whole 80, 20, 90, 10, whatever you want to call it. And whatever's bringing in 80% or more of your revenue, get rid of everything else. This is a great time to start getting rid of anything that is not essential. And then more importantly, when you find that 80 or you find that 90, whatever is the big driver, the needle mover for you, pile it on, become an expert, become a specialist. That's what I did with annuity think tank. I started calling myself America's annuity expert. I wrote a little book about it and published it on Amazon. And all of a sudden, like I had news agencies and stuff contacting me. They're like, well, Hey, he must be the expert. He's got a blog and he's got a little book on it. I I didn't have to, I didn't have to go to college for that. I didn't have to go get some certification for that. I just started blogging. There's just one dude in his uh, basement in Texas at the time, just writing. That was it. And all of a sudden I became like one of America's authorities on, on a certain type of annuity. And you could do the same thing. I, once again, no one gave me permission. I just did it. And you can do people are doing it all the time. You don't have to have a certification or a certain license. Uh, no matter what industry, I've, I've seen this work on any kind of industry possible, regardless if you're a doctor, if you own a pool company or a roof or whatever it is, there are people out there that are looking for your product or service or whatever you happen to sell that are doing research online and have some questions, be the person that answers them, become that specialist, the expert that people rely on and say, gosh, yeah, you know, Bob, Sue, whoever it might, whoever you are, yeah, they're the expert on this subject. I'm going to do business with them when things do get better. Uh, right now, your entire goal, obviously, besides staying open, is is just creating a name for yourself, creating more eyeballs, building up a bigger audience, starting to create leads uh, and starting to create customers too, even at break even. That's a big thing that we're doing. Like with Slam Shady, we lose money on every single time. We're giving away Slam Shadies. If you haven't taken one, uh, feel free to at slamshady.com and you can grab a free pack. We, we lose money. Um, I mean, it, it's pretty obvious we lose money. All we're doing is, is asking you to pay for the shipping and we don't make money on shipping. That's the exact, that's the, down to the penny charge that the USPS uh, charges us for first class shipping with tracking. So we lose money on that and we have to pay someone to do it. So we actually lose quite a bit of money. Why would we do that? Well, one, to create a lead. Number two, to create a customer. Now we have a customer. We have someone who, who's now done business with us and we know, even though we're losing money, that once we get that out to them and it's a great product, it's actually an amazing product that a majority of those people will come back and buy another pack or two or 50. And a majority of those people will join us in the Insider Club. That's how we've had so much growth in the Insider Club is giving away the free Slam Shadies. It's been massive for our company. And you could do that with any business that you're in. Find some, even if you're not selling it now, find some little widget, right? Find something small. I mean, if you were in the guitar business or a music business, give away a guitar pick, right? I mean, just something super small to create that customer, to add some value to them for being helpful. Um, and, and if and if there's not something physical, it doesn't have to be physical, do a do an ebook, uh, write up a little handbook like this pool guy did. I mean, write up just basically all the questions that most people have when they're buying a new pool. Hey, I, I want to make sure I'm not getting burned. I want to make sure I'm getting the best deal. Uh, I, I want to know the mistakes that a lot of, you know, first time home buyers or first time pool cleaners make. Answer those questions. Put it in a little a little PDF. That's simple. And then put it put it on your website. Give it out. Uh, let it be shared around like crazy with your name and contact information. You be you be shocked at how much this can do. I want I want to share one other cool story. Um, Captain Mark Johnson down in the the Florida Keys. Another great example. He knows. And he's smart enough to know that his ideal customer is going to Salt Strong because he heard a lot of people say, hey, I, I've, I've been watching Salt Strong or I'm a Salt Strong member. Same with Captain Peter Deeks. Both of those guys reached out to us after they kept hearing the, the name Salt Strong come up over and over again, saying, well, gosh, if all these customers who are paying money to be on my boat and fish with me are all part of Salt Strong, maybe I should team up with Salt Strong. And both guys said, hey, like, I'll just use Captain Mark Johnson first. He said, hey, guys, come on down. I'm going to take care of everything. He paid for uh, for a, a couple of nights of us to stay down there in the, in the Keys. 
He took us out in his boat, didn't charge us a dime, and let us film him. And he's like, yeah, man, put all this stuff. He, he was super helpful, shared some of his best tips. And guess what? Right now, we're paying him money. I know he's going through a tough time, and we're supporting him. We're actually giving him money every single month because of how helpful he was. And that was something. He didn't have to do it, but he was smarter. And not to mention, before this whole virus thing came, he got a ton of business. I mean, dozens of free customers came to him because they saw him on Salt Strong. It was a massive win-win for everyone. It was all because he reached out. He, he, he knew where his ideal customer was, reached out to us, and asked if he could be helpful. And we said, of course you can. We'd love for you to be helpful. We'd love to put some of your videos up. And now, of course, we're paying him to do it. Uh, I mean, churches, right? Churches are, are now doing that. They're, they're going online and probably reaching more people than they, they were just doing the, 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 the real church service with a, a physical presence in hopes, and I believe they're probably right, that once all of this is over, they'll have more people who are now comfortable and more people who are less intimidated to actually walk through those doors and come in there and, and attend church. So this is just, it, to me, it's a really exciting time. It, you can obviously look at it as scary and exciting, which I believe it is one and the same. But it's it's really exciting because we do have the internet. That's one thing that that is not going away. It's only getting bigger and growing by the day. You know your audience is on there. I think you'd be making a big, big mistake not to leverage it any way you can. And if you want help on this, reach out to me. If you made it this far, my email is joe at saltstrong.com. I'll give you a ton of resources, the stuff that helped me. I'll share with you the mistakes that I made along the way and how to do this, regardless if you want to do it on your own and start your own blog or your own YouTube channel, whatever it might be, or if it's just going out there and reaching out to uh, to other people. Um, there's a great book by Cameron uh, Harold, I believe it is, uh, about PR. Uh, if you just look up PR and, and Cameron Harold, you'll, you'll see it there. And that's an amazing book. It's literally a blueprint on how to make it in the, in the news. It's a blueprint on, on how to get recognized really quickly uh, for your product or, uh, or service. But ultimately, answer that question. Really think hard on this. Where are your ideal customers right now, in, in particular, when it comes to the internet? And once you can dial that down, who your ideal customers are and where they're going, what kind of Facebook groups or what kind of podcasts are they listening to, what kind of, of, uh, of, of news pages are they on, and then somehow get in front of that fast-moving train. You'll be shocked at what it can do to your business. Uh, many prayers coming your way uh, for all you small businesses. Like I said, you're the heartbeat of, a, of America. I truly believe that. And uh, I want to see every one of you not just survive, but thrive during this. And I really do believe being helpful, right? We all know just being helpful and being giving, it, it always comes back to us tenfold. And this is your chance to grow an audience, right? To, to have less obscurity and to have more people knowing about you than at any other time. So when this does turn around or your business opens back up, you are going to be flooded with so much business, you don't know what to do with it. And that is my prayer for you, but you're going to have to take action. And once again, I'd love to hear from you. If you have any questions on this, joe at saltstrong.com. I would love to hear from you. Guys, be good, be safe, wash your hands and think outside the box and take some massive action. This is the time to do it. Cause this year, it's in my soul. It was passed down to me from the days of old. Find us on the water if there was a way. It's been said my papa, he wrote the book on catching big reds and 20 pound snook. I wish I knew. Souls to stay.